This video was brought to you by Sky Firearms. For more information, check them out at sky.com. That's S-C-C-Y dot com. Hello, Paul Markle from Student of the Gun here. And today we're going to talk about the upgrades that I have made to the new SDS Imports PX9 Generation 3. Step one, this is for all you Baldwins out there. Step one, remove the ammunition source. Step two, lock the action open. Step three, insert your little pinky in there. Step four, look with your eyeballs. And if you can't see in there, get a flashlight out and look. Okay, now I have visually and physically inspected the chamber. Pow, there you go. All right. So uh, as we've talked about previously, this is the PX9 Gen 3 duty model with a threaded barrel from SDS Imports of Knoxville, Tennessee. What have I done since we last talked? Well, you might notice that I applied this white finish. The uh, gun started out as FDE, flat dark earth, but it's winter time now and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make it white. Why? Because I can. What did I do? I put the, and we talked about this on the radio, this is the mission-specific Duracoat. What does mission-specific mean? It means you can change it. Uh, this is winter white right here, and so what I did is I uh, took off the hollow, I took off the hollow sun, and I took the barrel out, and so on and so forth. I taped it up, and I sprayed it with the white. Uh, you can still see a little bit of the original finish from underneath, that's fine uh, because things in the wilderness are not pure 100% white. Generally, they're, they're white with a little bit of green under them, white with a little brown, white with a little black, whatever. Because, and I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because in the springtime, when everything gets green again, I'm going to take this mission-specific paint remover, the Duracoat remover. I'm going to shake, shake, shake it up, spray this thing, take a blue scratch pad, and remove all the white. And then maybe I'll put some green on it or some brown or black or maybe I'll do a cool camouflage pattern, whatever. Mission specific, uh, it's Duracoat quality, but it doesn't have the permanent hardener in it. So you can change it up. Like I said, we talked about that on the radio ad nauseum on Student of the Gun Radio. So okay, we did that, bingo. What else did we do? I installed the uh, I installed the Night Fission Accurate Sights right here. This is a tritium front sight with a blaze uh, green or what do they call that? Safety green. Uh, it's a yellow, that's super bright yellow green with a tritium insert. The rear sight has a tritium insert with no uh, color around it, okay? Uh, these are the new versions of the Accurate Sights. And as we discussed before, the sight cuts are designed for the Glock 17. So these are actually Glock 17, 19, 22, 23, that you get it, uh, sights. These are really simple to install. Uh, they come with everything you need to install them basically, except for the, the, the sight pusher or the, or the punch or whatever. But super easy to install. It took me probably 10 minutes total to install both of these sites. Now right here, uh, you see this hollow sun. This actually is a hollow sun ACSS Vulcan, and I got this from Primary Arms. Now the interesting thing about this is it has the green chevron in it. The one that I had on here before, the first one that I put on was a Shake Awake, I don't remember the model number, they, but it was a red dot. Now, I took this gun out. I took it out uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, when things were still brown before the snow was on the ground and so forth. Shot it with the red dot, everything was great. Uh, and the great thing about this is because it sits so low, this sight sits directly onto the slide. There's no mounting plate to make it higher. So when you look through here, I'll hold it like this, when you look through here, you can look straight through and see 
your front sight. You look straight through, look through the rear sight, line your sights up just like normal, look through there, line up the sight. So what you can do, and what I have done, is when I install a red dot on here, I just tune the red dot so that it's sitting right on top of the front sight. Super easy. It's a like two minute, three minute BZO. Put it on there. I put the, the dot so that it's sitting right on top of the front sight and I'm good to go. Uh, when I installed this green one, like I said, I got this from the, uh, the folks at Primary Arms. I got this from Primary Arms. It has, <laughs> it has the, uh, the solar panel on top, but it also has a battery inside as well. So essentially this thing is almost never, ever, ever, ever gonna die. Um, it's gonna last you probably until you pass it down to your children or something. Uh, why did I switch out from the red to the green? Because I wanted to test something. Yesterday, I went out, had the red dot on here, had it tuned, like I said, I had it at the range before. A um, Little bit hard to see in the daytime, right? A Little bit hard to see. Uh, but I was able to make it out, but you really gotta look, because why? Well, that big yellow thing in the sky, the sun, when the sun is bright, it washes out red pretty hard. It's like red lasers versus green lasers. Uh, if the sun is bright and you've got a red laser, you're probably not gonna find it, okay? So I thought, I'm gonna test, test a theory. So I swapped out the red one, put the green one on, went back out this morning, same conditions, snow-covered ground, super bright, no clouds in the sky, bright sun, and I was able to pick up the green really fast. Um, so that is something to think about. You're like, well, why would I want green if I've already got red? I mean, red is fine, I don't care. Um, you don't have to have either. You said, well, yesterday when I was out, and I was having a hard time picking up the red dot, it was no big deal because I can look straight through, pick up my front sight, and shoot like that. So there you go. Uh, that is actually something that I think a lot of people don't understand. They're like, well, are those suppressor height sights? Do you have to have suppressor height sights to go on along with your uh, with your red dot or your, your dot sight or whatever? No, you know. These are not suppressor height sights. They are duty sights. So pretty cool. Took it out in the snow. Um, I did the, 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 uh, the meathead thing where I threw it in the snowbank and pulled it out of the snowbank. And yes, snow got into there. And what I had to do was I just had to use the silhouette of the slide to shoot. And it took a couple of rounds of the action moving back and forth and the snow fell out and so forth. And he's like, oh man, well, what if, what if I was in, in engaged in combat and my, my gun fell in the snow and I had to pull it out and there was a bad person I had to shoot him. Point the mother loving gun at him and cack off some rounds and the snow eventually will go away. You can stop shooting, call training timeout and polish your gun. Calm down, freak. Uh, do I anticipate throwing my gun in the snow or dropping it in the snow on, on purpose? No, I don't. Uh, if that's a problem for you or, or whatever, if you think, oh, that's a big deal. Now, of course, if you drop it in the snow and pull it out, there'd probably be snow on your sights too. And you'd have to shoot the gun and then the snow will blow off. So whatever you want to do. Uh, I did take this out in the, it wasn't super cold. Uh, the first time I took it out, I think it was around... 10, 11 degrees. Uh, when I took it out the last two days, it was in the teens, like 13, 14 degrees. Uh, I did put the EDC CLP on it. The gun was in the cold. It was in the teens, 10, 9 degrees, whatever. And it ran just fine. No problems whatsoever. I didn't have any gumming it up or anything like that. So, uh, and oh, while, while I was out, I shot a bunch of other ammo before. I put a bunch of Defiant ammunition. Uh, this is the 115 grain TCX super expanding load plus P ammo. I put two magazines of that through this. And you're like, why only two magazines? Because this crap ain't free, man. Um, this is premium killer ammo. This isn't practice ammo. So if you want to load up for real, you put stuff like this in there. Uh, but uh, yeah, ran, I think it wouldn't. I mean, I anticipated it would, and it ran just fine. So 
Um, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I'm, the more I shoot this gun, the more I like it. I haven't had any problems, no stoppages or what have you. Like I said, I switched up the uh, the hollow sun. I switched up the color of the dot from red to green and so forth. Uh, one other thing, and I'll let you guys go. About somewhere around 9-10% of American adult males have some form of colorblindness. It's just fact, right? And one of the big things with colorblindness is the inability of people who are colorblind to pick up the color red. Uh, I know someone personally who has a colorblindness issue and can't use red, si red dot sights. There's no point in it because he can't pick up the red, he can't distinguish the red dot, so there's no point in it. I had him try a green one and he's like, oh, it doesn't look red to me, but I can see it. I was like, aha, there you go. There you go. And of course, if somebody's colorblind, if they've been colorblind their whole life, and you say that's red, what does red mean to them anyway? Uh, they just know that there's different shades and variations of gray and black and white. But the fact is, sometimes people who have a color vision issue cannot see a red dot sight, but they can pick up that really bright, that uh, safety green, that really bright green. They can pick that up. So... If you have color vision issues and you get a, a green sight, you might actually be able to use it. So there you go. That's just something to think about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Markle from Student of the Gun. Remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.